Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Before we start, take a second to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our content, like the next live stream here on YouTube that we do every afternoon at 15.30 Eastern. Also, don't forget our free morning brief that's waiting for you at ssftg.com slash brief. That way you can be sure you're loaded up with the major levels of interest for the day, as well as, of course, some charts to get you going on the right foot. And maybe you're looking to get filled in ahead of time with a video-based game plan every morning, every week, every month. Then you can take a look at the join button below the video to gain access to the SSFTG briefings. And if you want to get into the action, you can check out the live analysis rooms that we go over the New York Stock Exchange open. Also, don't forget about our Thanksgiving pie sale. If you haven't seen this yet, you have a few more days to take advantage of a massive 31.4% discount. Gotta love that pie on everything we have to offer. That's only valid until December 1, so make sure that you don't miss your chance to join. All right, so the topic for today is going to be candle by candle analysis and psychology. And today is going to be an interesting one because it's coming back from the Thanksgiving holiday. Everyone's kind of getting back into the groove of things, right? They may be waking up a little bit late if they ate too much. But realistically, it's kind of a fresh slate, right? We're going into a new month. We're going into December now. Uh, we don't have any holidays for a couple weeks at least. So there's, there's a little bit of a period where uh, trading kind of goes back to whatever normal is. Now, looking at where we're opening up, we're opening up with a gap down. And the first bar of the day is a doji. That's not great. And, you know, we always want to catalog where are we. So if we zoom out a little bit here, we can see that the market is finding an open right on top of all of that previous structure, right? Huge amounts of support, huge amounts of resistance all over the place. And now the market is opening up directly on top of it. So this is going to be a big zone of interest to see, you know, hey, are the buyers going to follow back through to the upside? Are sellers going to continue back down? What are traders looking to do with this information? We get a follow through bear bar to the downside. It is on lower volume than the first candle, but realistically, the first candle was the 930 open. So there's going to be a lot of volume on it, whether it's a doji or not. Uh, but seeing this big bear bar to the downside, breaking underneath the lows with a big wick. I mean, that's a big body to it, too. And it still has pretty low volume, all things considered. That is kind of a good thing for shorts. It's not necessarily saying that buyers are coming in. There is a big wick on the bottom, so obviously there was some rejection, but not enough to necessarily tip the scales. So the sellers will probably look for a bit more continuation to the downside, even though it is digging deep into a buy zone. We get a little bit more back and forth, and now we're starting to see a lot of wick on the top, a lot of wick on the bottom. Volume is continuously drying up. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of sentiment to the downside anymore. We're not seeing a lot of sentiment to the upside. We're showing signs that, at best, it's probably going to go into a range. Buyers are looking to buy low. Sellers are looking to sell high. And from a high standpoint, we could be looking to sell above the previous bear bar, back at the opening price again. Anywhere up there is going to be a zone of interest. From a range perspective, that would be high. From a range perspective as well, this would technically, uh, at least for now, be maybe low. We don't have any proof down here yet, but at least we know where expensive is. So if we're looking for shorts, there's a potential. We get another continuation back to the upside with a third bear bar. Uh, I'm sorry, continuation back to the downside with a pop higher on that wick. That's what I was looking at. Uh, in the volume, big increase. Now, like we were just talking about, we haven't seen the increase in volume yet. So it really wasn't being shown to us where people were taking profit, getting into new positions, exiting old positions, just kind of taking action. And now we're starting to see that come to fruition. We've got a nice bear bar to the downside. It is a very heavy close below the previous several, well, actually all of them. Uh, and it's the lowest close they've had all day, but we've got big volume. So volume is starting to creep up while the market's driving down. That could be a sign that stops are getting hit and they're liquidating, but it could also be a sign that buyers are starting to come in. Could be sellers who are taking profit or new buyers, but either way, a buyer is a buyer. And we get a strong bull bounce back to the upside. Now, this is the interesting thing here because this big bull rocket ship of a candle to the upside came on low volume. Uh, there wasn't that much volume. Huge bull bar to the upside. Where is everybody? Right? Well, that's a good thing if you're a buyer because that shows that nobody's taking profit, right? Sellers aren't coming into it. 
Uh, so that's a good sign from the bullish perspective. But then we look backward a little bit and we can see, well, where are we, right? Location wise, we're right back to that same spot. And now we're on the underside of it. We were looking at it as support up here, but now it's kind of broken through. This is becoming a little bit of a zone where it could get a bit trappy. Buyers might be looking for deeper prices here to buy in. And now we're starting to crack underneath these major levels of support or was supposed to be support. A bounce back up could potentially just be resistance and a drive back down. So the lack of volume does show that buyers are at least trying to get something going. But we've got to really see what the follow through is because this is the first bull bar they've had all day. It's big. <laughs> they've got that going for them. And then it falls flat on its face. So bulls will buy above this bull bar, right? That's a 100% certainty. I guarantee you that buyers will have bought above this bull bar. And they're going to be looking for upside objectives back towards the moving average, which so far they haven't gotten. So those are the high probability scalpers. They've got a good chance of being successful because their risk is so much higher. They're taking a lot of risk so that they can get those small targets. Kind of like an insurance company, right? They're, they're taking the other end of the bet when somebody destroys their Audi because they're hoping that it doesn't happen, right? Uh, when it does, they take a big ding. But when it doesn't, they just keep getting those recurring payments every month from the customers. Uh, it's the same concept here. They're taking on a lot of risk, i.e. being a scalper, but uh, the probability is very high. So buyers are going to be looking for a continuation move to the upside for at least a scalp, which scalpers will have gotten, uh, and potentially a little bit more. The fact that it fell flat on its face, and now we've got a big bear bar to the downside and no volume. This is the lowest volume the market has put in all day. That is a fantastic sign for bears. That is a horrible sign for bulls. Nobody is standing in the way of these, of these bears. They're pressuring down, and not a soul is standing up to the plate to try to fight back against them. We get another bear bar down, and this one has a big rejection. We have an increase in volume, but look at the context of where that volume came in versus how the bear bar formed. We've got a big wick on the highs. So seeing this volume increasing and the fact that it went up and failed lower, that would add a lot of context to the bears. That says a lot for the sellers, right? It went up, it failed, it found more sellers, and it pushed back down. And notice where it failed, right? These are the little details that you really want to keep your eyes open buyers will have been buying above this bull bar for a scalp if they didn't get their scalp and they were wrong and it dipped all the way back down here where did it come back to just enough to get them out of break even only to see it roll back down and close on its lows that's a big big clue if shorts haven't already gotten in they will definitely be getting in on this looking for more continuation down we get another big bear bar, a big wick on the highs, a nice, it's not an increase in volume to the previous candle, but it is a bump in volume. It's not the lowest, at least. And again, context, big wick on the highs, big rejection closes on its lows. Where did it go to this time? Last time they were given a chance to get out of break even. This time they missed break even. And that's usually indicative of a trap. When you see that kind of movement where it gives someone a break even, Pulls down, comes back, comes close to break even, and then fades off again. It's a pretty big clue that traders are stuck and buyers are probably stuck on this move because they were looking for the upswing. And now all of a sudden they're realizing that Audi is becoming expensive, right? The other end of the trade is starting to happen, even though it doesn't tend to, at least for high probability traders, that's what they're dealing with now. We get a big bear blow off through the bottom and obviously volume increases. A lot of stops getting hit. A lot of sellers taking profit, right? Shorts taking profit, new buyers below the lows, profit targets all over the place. It makes sense to see volume increasing, but the bear bar still closed down pretty aggressively. It closed below the lows, right? It closed with another big wick rejection on the highs. Everything is still looking pretty strong to the bear side. And if anything, there's, there's just kind of this falling kind of channel top that's that's giving something to work with uh so it's just this kind of equidistant channel working its way lower sellers continue to the downside breaking out lower big rejection on the top big wick on the highs and a big close on the bottom volume increasing again contextually we've got that big wick on the highs and the fact that it closed on its bottom with increasing volume would tell us that sellers are still selling. Or at the very least, buyers are getting out <laughs> and they're turning into sellers. Either way, the bears still have the pressure and they're continuing to the downside. 
The Bulls have only had one candle in a doji. That's all they've got to work with, so not a whole lot there. And sellers are just kind of waiting for anything to sell, right? Give them a pullback. Give them a retrace. Give them something to sell into. We find a little bitty bull bar. And this little bull bar doesn't do anything, right? It went below the new lows, but we didn't find any new volume. So that would suggest that sellers aren't taking profit on a new low yet. Uh, mainly because it was, it was only one candle difference. It's only a couple ticks, right? It's not that much different from the bear bar that came before. So we're not seeing anybody really take action yet. Nothing's happening. We're in a balance. This could be a flag before another breakdown, right? If you went on a faster time frame, maybe a one minute chart, you would see a nice little flag formation there. Uh, but the volume's low and, and everybody's just kind of waiting. Big breakdown to the downside. Bears continuing to slug the market back lower and a huge bump in volume, right? A big increase in volume with a big drive lower. We're still seeing these candles closing on their lows and we just broke below a major zone that buyers wanted to see. A lot of sellers are going to be taking profit here. And if you were to extend the channels out, we're probably at around the channel lows too. So everything's kind of lining up down here uh, where traders will be taking profit and it keeps going. So we see volume do what? It increases, right? We're seeing more profit taking. It doesn't mean that the market has to reverse right this second. These bear bars are still really heavy. Right? There's, there's nothing in the way of the bears at the moment. And if we zoom out a little bit further, we can see that we're diving underneath some major zones. If we draw a line from current price backward, there's nothing, right? There's nothing to hold the market up. Not until we start getting down to around, well, a little bit below 3,600s. Right, if you were to put a level on it, it would be floating around, we'll say about right there, give or take a couple ticks. So the 3598 quarter area, that's the nearest that we really have to work with. And right now, this is kind of in a free fall. Sellers are obviously very happy and they're continuing to take profit. We're seeing increases in volume uh, and the bear bars are still closing really low. It's a great sign that we're probably going to at least see a third bear bar in the sequence. And we get a third bear bar in the sequence. We're coming down to that major level of support, 3598 quarters right there. And it's picking up into a parabolic move. The candles are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's usually indicative of overextension, exhaustion, the market kind of overexerting itself, if you will. A lot of profit taking coming in down as we get into these lows. And this is the highest volume the day has seen since the 930 open. So there's obviously a lot of action going on here. But we've got that major target below at 98 quarters. So we've got to wait and see what they want to do here. Huge volume stepping up, lots of profit being taken. Not a surprise to see another push down and probably another bump in volume. But this time around, if it does go lower and we see a bump in volume, that could give us a clue that buyers are starting to come back in. Not just any buyers, though. New swing buyers buying off those major structural lows. Sellers taking profit. Short swings from this morning taking profit. Everybody doing the same thing in the same place. Big bear bar down. Increase in volume, right? Not a huge surprise. Biggest volume that the day has seen since the open. And we're seeing the candles not necessarily grow anymore. They're about the same size or maybe shrinking just a little bit. Not really a whole lot going on one way or the other, but this is obviously a massive move to the downside. And given what we're seeing on the volume, it's overextended. Eventually, it's going to find a bottom. It might be in one candle. It might be in 10 candles. It might be tomorrow. But either way, eventually, it's going to find a bottom on this overextension. It's going to bounce back a little bit. That's where we're going to have the earlier longs who got stuck up at the highs here looking for the continuation. They're going to be looking to get out at break even, and we're going to have new shorts looking to chase the move for a second leg lower. Big, gigantic bull bar. Now, this is where reading the volume along with the price action becomes very important. And I know this is going into 11 o'clock, but we've got a situation here where it's a massive rejection at the lows. And it reversed all the way up, closing as a bull engulfing candle. Well, wait a minute, right? If this is a bull engulfing candle and we saw the volume step up to the plate, contextually then, that would tell us that that was probably a huge amount of buy orders. Sellers reversing, sellers exiting, new swing buyers coming in. And it's twin reversaling, if that's a word, sure, we'll go with it, closing back above 3598 quarter. We're bouncing off that major zone of support. There's a lot of reasons to believe buyers wanting to try to get a continuation move off of this zone. It's just the first time it's come to it. So buyers will be waiting for a little bit more, but this is a big zone of interest and seeing the volume contextually play out like this, it's a pretty big clue that this might be gearing up for a V bottom. 
We get a very nice bullet continuation bar back to the upside in hyper low volume, super, super low, which is a great sign for bulls because that means nobody's taking profit. Sellers aren't selling, buyers aren't exiting. Regardless of the reason, there's no volume coming in on this move up, which means that we're probably going to keep going higher. We keep going higher with a third bar in the sequence and even lower volume. Again, nothing standing in their way. There's nothing saying that the market should stop going back to the upside. And now it's really starting to look like a V bottom going into 11 o'clock. And then we can see how the rest of the day kind of played out. They came back, bounced off support, and that's where we are right now. So the major, the major zone was 3598 quarter. Uh, but along the way, there were a lot of other areas of interest that could have played out and given you a few opportunities too that were very interesting. All right, so that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there, keep those stops in play, and let those winners run. I hope you had a fantastic day of trading, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.